How are you guys? Welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. I'm the Watchman on the Wall, Nikki Pratt. I don't know what my tablet is doing, but it just kind of froze in one section for a bit. Um, I wanted to jump on here real quick. And um, I did a video recently where I kind of put up a warning video about for you guys to pray for your children. And I talked about, I mentioned... I didn't talk about the dreams. I just briefly mentioned uh, the dreams that I had, but I didn't go into detail about the dream. I said that I wouldn't. But recently I had a prophetic trigger. It's, um, if you, um, with prophetic gifts come prophetic, there are a such thing as called a prophetic trigger. So I'll go into detail with that maybe on a um, an end time golden nugget video one day. But anyway, um, I need to in detail now tell the dream. So um, my tablet is doing some crazy stuff. But anyway, um, okay. So remember the dream I told you guys that some children went missing and in the beginning of the dream I knew it was some deception going on in my spirit I knew it was something wasn't right okay so anyway in this dream there was uh, some parents there were a lot of children in in this dream and um, wherever we was it was like at a um, like if you had a spa or some a civic center, it was something like a civic center where a lot of the kids was uh, invited to go. And um, as they were invited to go, there was a, a lot of the parents st uh, standing. Around, it's two seventeen. Um, a lot of parents standing around, and. Um, you know, there's kind of mumbling going on. You know, you know, we were just kind of talking amongst ourselves, kind of wondering what type of activities that they had for these kids to do. Because whatever was going on, the kids just had to be there. They had some great event that they wanted to do for these kids, you know, and there were families and just, you know, an area to where they wanted the kids. They wanted to do a lot about the, with the kids and, it was um, a big function, basically. So, um, all of a sudden, there were whoever the, the instructors was or whoever it was wanted, came in and did some talking and wanted the parents to separate from the children and go off into another room. So, we went off into another room. As we walk off into another room, there was... Um, As there was a table, you know, kind of a long table, and there were some people already sitting down, and um, they wanted all the parents to be together. So as I'm walking up to this table, there's a, a woman, she's sitting down in this white blouse, and she says, I walk up to the table, because when I walk in, the I guess the look I had on my face, you know, she knew that something wasn't sitting right with me. So... Um, I walk in his room and I'm like, and she said, are you okay? And I was like, mm, no. I said, well, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. She said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm good. And uh, huh. when I said that, some people sat down at the table, but then I sat down at the table and I, I looked like um, somebody walked up and said, hey, anybody seen uh, our kids? A lot of the kids are missing. And I was like, what? And then, you know, I was looking for my daughter, and then I went looking for my husband, and then my husband walks up, and I was like, I can't find Nakaya. Have, have, you, have, you, have you seen her? 444. And uh, he said, no, I mean, where would they go? They were just right next door. So, of course, a lot of the parents go walking over, uh, to look to see where the kids were, there were only a few kids in there. 
maybe like three. But these, I'm saying kids, I felt like that they were like, maybe college students or something that that was left. But anyway, those that was left had no idea where the children went. So of course there was parents running ragged, just, just out of their minds, just losing it because their children was missing. So I was like, well, I have to find my daughter. We, you know, there was a lot of parents like, we have to find out where did they do with them? There was no instructors around. Nobody knew anything. There was nobody around for us to ask. So if some, for some reason, um, there were a lot of parents that piled up in cars. Somehow, I end up in the car with, uh, I'm in the back seat to the right, and then some. the lady that was just crying hysterical because her daughter was missing, she's driving. So she's, I mean, just losing it hysterically. And... I was looking at them like, I don't think you okay to drive. So won't you pull over and, and let, let me drive? You, you really upset right now. You really need to pull over. So there was other people in the car, somebody in the, the front seat, then I was in the back. And I was like, won't you pull over? Because I'm looking at her driving off the road and she just, ooh, 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 you know, she's all upset. Quite natural. But anyway, um, as she... She pulls over and look like I get in the car to um, to drive and I look down the steering wheel was on my side and not her side and then I was and I looked down there was no foot pedals and I was like what what and I looked over on her side of the floor there was foot pedals but then somehow the dream switched to where I was driving the car. So basically, looking back at it, I, I felt like this car was, and you're going to find out why, the car was like, it, it was almost as if I was in a foreign country or something. Why was the steering wheel on the opposite side, not on the normal side, on the left-hand side normally, like we Americans drive, right? So anyway, I'm going down the street and all of a sudden I stopped because there was this vehicle or van or truck or something ahead of us that had these kids piled all in it. But they was laying, whatever these kids, we knew that they were kids. And let me tell you why I'm saying this. Because the way the children was laying in this van, truck, whatever it was, the door was open. To where you can see their bodies. Yes, I said bodies. They were laying in there like carpet. You know how if, if a, a truck is carrying carpet, the the they're in rolls and just all stacked all over each other. That's how these children was. They were in rolls and they were just kind of stacked all over each other. So, in the middle of all these kids were animals. Okay, yeah. But I knew that they were dead. When the doors flung open to where we can see that there were children, it looked like parents started screaming, hey, that's the children right there, blah, 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 blah. We, I pull over, we get out of the car. There's, as we coming up on the car, bodies was falling out of this vehicle. And uh, dead animals, dead bodies, and... Uh, Again, you know, I, I remember hearing somebody screaming or whatever. Again, the dream switched to where we was, um, I was, it looked like at this facility, all of a sudden it, it appeared to be night. It was no longer day with the sun was shining. But it appeared to be night, and there was um, like a continuous one-story building, um, there was some areas that, that was kind of, it was some areas that was kind of separated, but um, there was like light poles, and I remember seeing men 
that appeared like they were security guards or something, like they were standing out, standing watch. But this place was almost like a, re a resort or some type of camp or something. Whatever it was, somebody felt like that the children was there. Some of the children was there. So we go into our rooms. There were room numbers. I remember seeing like a room uh, 165 or something like that and um, everybody was taking suitcases. We were going into our rooms. While we were there, I felt like there were uh, some of us that did not want these people to know that we knew that some children was there. It's crazy, I know. But um, long story short, uh, some of us started looking for these kids, and we going from like room to room. Somehow, somebody caught on to why we were there and what we were really doing. And uh, these guards, whoever they were, they had accents, like they were not from here. So uh, it was almost like their accents was almost like maybe Jamaican or. It wasn't American, put it that way. So, but every time the, they would come through the rooms and, and confiscate these people, you know, they would get people. When they would come in, they would come close to me. They wouldn't touch me. They would look at me. They would conversate with me. But they would let me do whatever it was that I wanted to do. They would not bother me. And... Uh, I just kind of moseyed around, but looked like I went outside, and I, I'm still looking for my daughter. And as I go outside, I, I asked one of the guards. I was like, who was dressed in like a security guard? Not a security guard, like a sheriff. Not security guard, sheriff. They were in sheriff-like outfits. And I was like, have you, uh, I'm looking for, I asked him about some room. And uh, he's like, oh, you have to go to that. But he had this accent. It was almost, it was like, Jamaican or, or, or something. He had a real thick accent. And uh, I remember telling him about his accent. Of course, I don't remember if he ever said what it was. But anyway, I uh, went walking off and to, to look for my room. And um, as I'm going into this room, there's I see one of the guards coming through uh, looking for one of the... Um, for one of the, the, the parents to try to get him. And uh, I kind of back up and just kind of hide and went around the corner. And uh, sure enough, as I'm hiding, I look down on the floor. There was a parent uh, hiding, behind, hiding beside a bed that didn't want to be found. He looks at me. I look at him. And then by the time this sheriff-looking guy comes in, he catches him. And then the sheriff got turned around. Of course, I can't hide no more. I'm right there. And he looks at me, and he just started having this conversation and um, start saying something, um, I don't know. It's almost like, anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. But anyway, um, the dream ended. It makes no sense. But. There was some deception going on, is what I felt like the whole time. Like, the, when I was there, even when we got there to bring the kids, I felt like it was something up. And sure enough, it played out like it was something up. All of a sudden, these kids were missing. Where did these group of people go? The, the adults was missing that had them. I mean, uh, that was doing whatever function it was with the kids. They were missing. The kids were missing. We couldn't find them. And then we did find, see a lot of kids, but it was a lot of dead bodies. Were, it wasn't my child because I don't remember that um, because the dream switched. But I do remember there was a bunch of people screaming and hollering because there was um, dead bodies falling out of this vehicle in front of us. So um, anyway, part two.
fast forward in another dream. I think I've told this dream before. But I've been seeing a lot of things in the uh, news lately. And somebody, one of my subscribers, sent me a video about this uh, today. How a parent killed her child doing some type of ritual. Now, if you remember, I told a dream about uh, there was, I kind of mentioned it briefly, but I don't know, I, I don't remember, I think I did kind of go into detail, but I remember saying it was so wicked and so twisted and so evil. But in this dream, I'm like a spectator, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, and uh, there was a teenager laying in a bed. There were what I know to be witches on the side of him. And um, they were doing things to him under the cover, sexual. And um, it was awful. It was real vulgar. They was, he looked to be 15 years old. He was Caucasian. He looked to be 15 years old. They were making him do things that he did not want to do, uh, th things that he was not ready for. And uh, in the at the foot of the bed, there were two other witches, demons, what have you, doing a had a, a body that was cut in half, doing some type of ritual and and using body parts, and it was just utter disgusting. And uh, yeah. I woke up from that dream, but this kind of stuff is actually happening. I mean, it's crazy. It's like what I saw, what I saw in my dream, is actually happening with this ritual stuff. I mean, they were picking, using organs and things out of this child's body that was cut looked like it was cut in half part of his body was missing and the and the poor little 15 year old in the bed he was just oh man i i can't go into detail because it's just too graphic but um it was horrible we got some evil real wicked twisted evil that is in the play right now so you know, I went ahead and, and, and told the dream. It's a little graphic. It's a little disturbing to me. Um, a lot of times when you, you're you having dreams, the enemy will come in and sow different things to try to trip you up, to get you confused, and to make it sound all warped so you wouldn't get revelation on what I, I don't have full revelation on the dream. But I'm telling the dream. The Bible says you have a dream, tell a dream. I'm telling the dream. Because as you can see, the videos I did previously, warning, pray for children, all of a sudden, there have been isolated stories about children. But lately, in the news, it's like, wham. I mean, all kinds of evil, graphic things are happening with children. So... You know, I, I wanted to come in and tell you guys uh, about it so that when you pray, now you would know what to pray against. Because when you, when we pray in sometimes with well, situations, sometimes you don't know what to pray for. So telling you this, like you'll know missing children. Some people just come up missing. Um, um, yeah. And this wicked ritual stuff that's actually coming, you know, playing out in the news right now. So pray about that. I'm going to definitely be in prayer. Um, I know you guys probably heard about the, the story of uh, this video that's been passed around on uh, social media um, lately about this this little girl this older man decides to have her to this little bitty baby 
I mean, it made me furious to where I was in the closet repenting. I mean, I was furious. I just heard the story. I didn't see any pictures. I didn't want to see it. I don't want to see any video. Just hearing it was enough for me. It's just, just oh, man, it, it's, it's ridiculous. You're talking about some righteous indignation rose up in me. It's, it's, it's oh, man, don't, I don't even want to talk about it. But uh, that kind of stuff. You guys pray for the things like, and I'm going to tell you something else. I don't know if anybody paying attention, but this, hour, this is an hour of judgment. Good judgment, bad judgment, it's also an hour of exposure. And I don't know if you're paying attention. A lot of things that has been done, the Bible says what's done in the dark will be made manifest. A lot of sexual in nature things that have been done in the dark is being judged right now in this hour being brought to light. Oh, yeah. Is being brought to light. You see, in NASA, uh, the um, all these big companies that's been doing things with with females or um, all kinds of sexual stuff in nature. All these people that's doing perverse things with these children. Oh yeah, and I've been praising the Lord because these are the things that I have been praying for. Lord, if these kids are being misused, oh, especially when those thirteen people came. Up, I mentioned it on one of my videos on the news, and they broke free. <laughs> Praise God! All glory to God. That's where your prayers will come in. Pray for repentance. Uh, that a lot of these people will repent, and pray that a lot of these people would get caught. Because that's exactly what I pray for. Because you know, when they get caught, they in jail. They got time to be there by themselves. The Lord have time. To send his minister and angel to minister to to them. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it something. These people that wanna molest children. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So anyway, um, pray, pray, you guys, pray for them. See you next video. Thanks.